Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very interesting radical equation with complex numbers. So we have the square root of z and z is a complex number, we'll talk about that, and plus the square root of the opposite of z and they add up to 5 minus i which is another complex number. So it makes sense, right? When you add two complex numbers you get 5 minus i unless you're adding two complex conjugates, which will give you a real number. But since these are not conjugates, or are they? How do we get 5 minus i from here? So I'll be presenting more than one method, probably at least two. So let's go ahead and take a look. My first method, by the way, if you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. If you like algebra number theory and trigonometry problems, we also do some trigonometry here, since complex numbers involve a lot of trigonometry. Go ahead and check out my other channel, Cyber Math, Cyber with an S. All right, let us know what you think. So first method is basically going to involve squaring both sides, because why not? We have a radical, let's do it. If you square both sides, then you get z and then negative z, which is nice because they'll cancel out, plus 2ab is going to give us 2 times square root of z times the square root of negative z. And if you square 5 minus i, you've got to remember that i squared is negative 1. Again, we go over these in lecture notes, but you should know this. i squared is negative 1. i is the square root of negative 1. There are two square roots, but one of them is considered the square root, the principal square root. So we're going to square this like 25. i squared is negative 1. And then minus 10i. Great. So this gives us 24 minus 10i. And here these two cancel out and we end up with 2 times the square root of negative z squared. By the way, z times negative z. But wait a minute. Uh, when you multiply two radicals, it becomes this. But does this rule apply to complex numbers? Not all the time. You got to be very careful here. But we're just going to just ignore all the complications and go with, you know, the regular flow. So we can go ahead and divide both sides by 2. That will give us 12 minus 5i. By the way, this is really cool because 12, 5, 13, that's a Pythagorean triple. It's not a coincidence, obviously. There's a good reason behind it. But anyways, how do we deal with this? Well, there's a radical, so why not square both sides one more time, right? Let's do it. If you square both sides, you're going to get negative z squared because it'll basically eliminate the square root, right? And this should give us 144 minus 25 because 5i squared squared, 25i squared is negative 25, minus 120i. Awesome. And this should give us negative z squared equals, what is 144 minus 25? 119 minus 120i. Great. We can definitely go ahead and multiply both sides by negative 1. Aren't you disturbed by that too? Come like, like an OCD. z squared equals negative 119 plus 120i. So it basically comes down to finding the square root of this number. Can we do that? Let's give it a try. Well, to be able to find the square root of a complex number, there's a couple different ways to do it. There are formulas even you can find online. It's kind of fun to memorize, I guess. But you can also do it this way. Since z is a complex number, what's the name of this channel? Don't forget. So I made it a plus bi. You can square this, add it equal to, I mean, set it equal to this. And then from here, hopefully you can solve for a and b. Let's find out. We get a squared minus b squared from i squared again, plus 2abi equals negative 119 plus 120i. What does that mean? It means this is negative 119, right? So like this, negative 119, and this is supposed to be 120. Okay, that gives us a following system. I want to keep it positive, so I'm going to flip or negate, and then AB would be from year 60. So here's the million-dollar question. <laughs> Can you solve for A and B? And the answer should be yes, right? It's a quadratic system. You can try to guess and check as well, uh, looking at factors of 119 particularly, because 119 is, let me think about it, Divisible by 7. You know how I know that? I just quickly checked. Double 9, it's 18, subtract, and you get negative 7. Yeah, it's a really cool way to check divisibility by 7. 
There's other ways too, of course. If you have a six digit number, that's actually really, really awesome because you can just copy. And anyways, that's a different story. Maybe we can talk about it later if you remind me. But this is our system. So can we factor 119 and since it's divisible by seven? And let me think about it. It should be 17 times seven, right? 20 minus three, of course. And then, hmm, that should give us B plus A and B minus A. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna try to find the BA value such that their product is 60. Easy, right? Well, kind of. If you go with 119 and one, here's what you need to remember. To find B, you're gonna add these two numbers, these two numbers, and divide by two. To find A, you're gonna subtract and divide by two. So here's how it goes. Let's find the B first, okay? So it's not A, B, but we're gonna go with B comma A, sort of, okay? Add them up, you ha cut in half, subtract and cut in half. This is not gonna give us the product. So it's a little different. Uh, the next one, by the way, 119 is 17 times seven, so it's not divisible by three, four, five, six. It's only divisible by seven and 17. Hopefully this works, please do. So the sum is 24, it's 12 and five. Yay, this worked, awesome. So it means B is equal to 12 and A is equal to five. But what is that supposed to mean? It means you find the answer. So if z squared is equal to this, and we assume z is equal to a plus bi, so it's gonna be five plus 12i, right? Okay, is that the only solution? No, because if you think about the original problem, what was the original problem? It was this one, square root of z plus the square root of negative z equals, I forgot, what was the other number? Five minus i, I think, right? Yeah. If you replace z with negative z, this is also gonna work. So if z is a solution, negative z is also a solution. So the other solution, we can call this z1 and z2 would be the opposite of five plus 12 i, which is negative five minus 12 i. And actually there's a way to check this. If you try to find the square root of five plus 12 i, uh, and find the square root of the opposite of z, and then hopefully from here, you can check your work, right? But let's go ahead and maybe approach this problem a little bit differently if there's a way to do it, I don't know. I'm just gonna try, okay? So here's the second approach, okay? So we have the square root of z plus the square root of negative z equals five minus i. So here's my second thought. Z and negative z are related, how? Negative z can be written as negative one times z. Okay, good, but what is the big deal? Well, didn't I just tell you that this is gonna turn into negative one times z. And if you separate them, square root of negative one is i, so this is gonna give us i times the square root of z. But is it always gonna give us i? What if it's negative i? Could it be? Possibly. We're gonna check that too, but let's go do this first. And if that's the case, you don't need to square both sides or anything, don't go into anything crazy yet, because we're gonna factor out square root of z, and then write this as one plus i. Awesome, right? Now this turns into a division problem. Yay, how do you divide complex numbers? Well, you kind of multiply by the complex conjugate. That's why complex conjugates are super important because they help you divide without dividing, <laughs> if you know what that means. So let's go to multiply this. Five plus i squared, which is four, and then negative five i minus i is negative six i. Divide by, this is, 1 plus i, 1 minus i, their product is 1 minus i squared, which is 1 plus 1, which is 2. Yay, we got square root of z equals 2 minus 3i. Hmm. That's interesting. Did we find something similar before? Uh, I'm not sure. Well, we found z first. We didn't find square root of z. But I was just telling you, you can go ahead and check it, right? Plug it in. Okay, we can now do that. So if square root of z is that, hmm, what can I do with this? I can square both sides, yay. To find z. So if you square both sides, you get z equals 4 plus minus 9, negative 5 minus 12i. Hmm. Does that look familiar? That should. Look at that. That's kind of like the square root of negative z, maybe, or it's the other way around. Doesn't matter. If z is this, then z is up 1, z is up 2. It's going to be the opposite. And you know what? We end up with the same solutions. Yay, success. I believe there's a third way to do it. And I think it can be done by thinking about the square root of z versus the square root of negative z. But here's the 
there are complicated cases. Depending on where z is, let's say you assume z is here, right? Then where is negative z going to be here? So you kind of look at the argument, call it theta, cut in half, and then this is going to be pi plus theta, and you can cut in half and go from there, and hopefully that'll work, but it's too much, and you know, I'm lazy, I'm not going to do it. Let's leave it at that, but let us know if you find that method helpful. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.